it's 8.30 in the morning. It's July. So naturally, we've had more rain in the last few days than we had in the whole of April, May and June. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my garden. The question of today is deadheading. I've got uh, two climbing, rambling roses behind me and they're starting to go over. And I'm not quite sure whether I should be cutting each individual head off or whether I can just cut it all off. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you're a gardening novice like me, I would love it if you would cheer me on from the sidelines and let me know the benefit of your advice in the comments. Why don't you consider subscribing to my channel? And that means you can keep up with my progress in the garden. And every time you take a look at the YouTube app on your phone, your laptop or your computer, one of my videos will be waiting for you. This is what my rose looks like at the moment. And I am really pleased with it because originally when I took over the garden, the bay here had just swamped this total area and you couldn't even see there was a rose growing. And there's two varieties. One is the multi-headed red rose and the one that's already gone over with nothing left to see at all was a lovely little peachy rose. But both varieties were multi-headed. It'd be quite nice to get a rose with a large bloom in it. So I know what to do with the blooms that have gone totally over. It's just a matter of cutting them off. But what about the ones that have got a bit more colour on them, like these over here? Do I have to go through stem by stem, cutting all the dead blooms out? Or should I just accept that I won't end up with any colour for a while and chop everything in one go? Decisions, decisions. It would be nice to keep some colour so let's see how practical it is, just cutting off the dead heads as I go. I've got my secateurs here. I almost feel this would be a job easier done with a pair of nail scissors. Do you think it's just going to be too laborious? Do you think they've just gone too far over? Especially with that rain that we've been having recently. It really has drenched everything and battered all the flowers in the garden. But I don't really want to let them all go. Perhaps I could just take part clusters off. I don't know. I've ended up getting rid of all of that. So perhaps that's the way to go. I just need to sacrifice all the heads in the hope that my rose will give me a second flush of colour. Oh goodness me, I've suddenly thought is deadheading a guaranteed of a second flush? Or am I sacrificing the colour and it won't come back? Ee -ee. That's something I need to look up. Let me know in the comments whether you think deadheading my roses is going to encourage a second bloom of colour. This foxglove stem's a little bit in the way, but I want it to dry out and self-seed around. I don't think anything's happening at the moment and it's been so damp recently it's not had a chance to dry out so I'm going in I'll see you later I'm wondering as well while I'm here if I can encourage some of these new stems to wind their way through the bay tree to smother it a little bit I guess the easiest thing to do would be to deadhead the ones that have totally gone over. I'm just left with the bits that are going to become the hips. Oh, I've had a casualty. Or well, stepping back, I've just trodden on one of my cosmos. I wasn't looking where I was going. Anyway, into the compost heap with these. Oops, I've just missed. <laughs> and let's move on. Oops. 
Do you think I can rescue any of those for a temporary vase arrangement? Well, I guess it's got two chances. Success or failure. A nice little potpourri of roses. So that needs to go to the compost heap. And these little plants here, that's fox and cubs. I'm not sure what the yellow one is. But let's see what else is happening in the garden. I've got one cosmos there at a jaunty angle. I turned around off my stepping stone and trod on it. My borage has fallen over. It's sending up lots of side shoots. This one here looks a good length for a vase arrangement. In fact, how long do you think my flowers will last in a vase? Well, if you watch on to the end of the video, I'll show you last week's flowers and how I'm going to revamp those to create another arrangement. It's like an everlasting arrangement, just picking out what's gone over and adding in fresh as I go. The penstemon there with the nibbled Canterbury boughs, which surely aren't going to come to anything now. Delphinium number two. Delphinium number one is somewhere there. Hydrangea. Just look how small those flower heads are. Is it ever going to come into bloom? Scabious. I can see that, that one there needs deadheading, as does that one. I've now got three flowers in my flower garden, but it's a cutting patch, so really I shouldn't expect to see any flowers here at all because I'm always going to be cutting them off just as they come into bloom. The leggy lavender is spilling out over the path, so my husband has propped it back. Can you see? the little metal piece here, the metal stake. So I wanted to have the flowers spilling over the garden path. And he said he doesn't like getting his legs wet in the morning when he walks down the path. So a compromise needs to be reached. The next time it's a sunny day, I'm going to crop my lavender and dry it and think about moving this plant here up over the other side just to take it away from the edge of the path. Exactly the same thing is happening with the teasel. If I was to walk along the garden path, <laughs> I get really prickled. <laughs> and they really are a prickly plant. So these will come out, not now. I need to wait for them to come into flower because the goldfinches absolutely love the seeds. So I need to wait for that little purple flower and then let the birds eat the seeds and it's definitely getting the chop. It's quite a popular plant to use in dried flower arrangements, especially at Christmas time. And I will say, while the heads are lovely and tactile, not really spiky at all, the stems are a real killer. A bit like Beauty and the Beast lovely soft head before it goes to seed. You certainly know about it if you brush past those spikes. You've even got them on the leaves and when it rains the water collects a little base where the leaf meets the stem. My acanthus has got an awful lot of leaf and just two flower spikes. Okay, I need to make a decision. Is this coming indoors as a cut flower or not? What would you do? Bearing in mind, I'm trying to grow flowers to enjoy indoors. I'm noticing things here too, in the bed just outside the back door. The sedum looks lovely and healthy. It's a sort of coppery variety. If I lift the camera up, you can see that the middle has fallen out of the shrub. 
and then all the stems at the end having gone have moved from a horizontal position to becoming more upright I did wonder whether they might start to root and become individual plants in their own right but I can't see anything happening just yet I guess if I wanted that to root I'd actually physically have to pin it down so it stayed in contact with the soil oh ha ha just had a thought I have spotted a tent peg I don't quite know why I've got a tent peg over there but let, I could use that as an experiment push down hook over and see whether that takes root Having cleared out this bed of the bindweed and the horrible native geranium, things are starting to poke back up again. So this is the foliage of the buttercup. Buttercups make surprisingly good cut flowers. And there's a seedling growing here. But how do you know what it is? Here's some lemon balm seedlings. And look, the banana plantation. So we eat quite a lot of bananas in our house and it's always been my husband's habit not to put them on a compost heap but to throw them out onto the flower beds. Is that because of the potassium? There is a rose here, my mum's rose and the peonies so perhaps it's giving them extra nutrition. And talking about my mum's rose, do you remember the video I posted last week when I showed you all the wildlife that had come to the garden. I hadn't been able to see it before because it was covered in so much bindweed. But I revealed the rose and it had two snails on it. Oh, look, it's come back to life. Now here's a job I've been meaning to do for ages. Put away my bulbs so I could plant them in pots next year. And of course, with the rain we've had recently, they are well and truly waterlogged. I think these were tater tate. So have they now rotted off? So what I'm going to do is drain the water off. And then if I put them perhaps underneath the patio table so they're sheltered from the rain, they might have a chance of drying out. These ones here don't seem too bad. Great pyacinths that I put into little moss cocodama balls. I guess I can unwrap those, put them in a brown bag, remember to put the name Great Pyacinth on the front, and then I can be all set to plant these for some early winter colour next year. Kicking myself really because it's been so dry and hot in recent weeks. I only got on with the job at the time. To be honest, I think any other normal person would just have thrown these roses straight into the compost heap. But I love using every last life of my flowers to enjoy indoors. So I'm taking this little container. It's a glass dish with three legs and a flower frog that fits over the top, which of course came from the charity shop. And I'm putting all those deadheaded stems through the holes to create a mass, a haze of red. So I'm switching out this bunch of flowers here. I made that actually at Zoom Flower Club this month. So if you're interested in joining my online flower arranging club, all you need to do is to click the button marked membership on my YouTube channel or follow the link in the description of this video. And it'll take you through the joining details and you get early access to my monthly video, my Monday videos, which you can watch advert free and you can have free access to my monthly online flower arranging club. Now, what about last week's flowers? Do you remember last week I showed you how I used this mini Hanataba to create a little spiral bouquet to sit inside my little spotted jug? Well, the flowers have lasted a week and they look just fine. There was just one scabious that had gone over. So I'm going to reinvent my flowers by using this 
little mantle vase. You can see me there thinking what I'm going to do. A little scrunched up bit of chicken wire inside. And I want to create a sort of constant spry, very modern Instagram look to my mantle vase. So instead of my flowers radiating out and draping over the edge of the container, everything's standing up in hopefully arch, graceful arches out to the sides. And here is the finished look. Of course, you've been looking at the back side where I was working. So a lovely little arrangement, the same quantity as flowers in my previous week's arrangement, but this time arranged in a slightly different way. Thank you for joining me in the garden this week. And don't forget, if you'd like to join my free Facebook group to share your gardening exploits and flower arranging skills, click the link in the description underneath this video or search Flower Start World on Facebook. And don't forget, if you'd like to join my online monthly flower arranging club, you need to do that by becoming a member of my YouTube group. That means paying a monthly fee. That's all for me for now, and I'll see you again soon.